What's going on everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. When I finished the truck back a month ago or so before I went to Hammers, I got it back on the road. Uh, it was rough, but it was in great shape and I haven't really had to do much to it since. I do have some stuff I want to knock out and uh, the last couple weeks that's what I've been focusing on because I have another really cool trip coming up. I am shooting to make it out to Moab for full-size invasion slash Easter Jeep Safari coming up here in April. Uh, if any of you guys are going to be out there, I'd love to meet up and uh, say hi. But I do have some stuff to get done before then. I've got a skid plate to put underneath. I got a skid plate on the rear. Got to get the sway bar in. Got to get the suspension settled like ride height and get everything all the same. And uh, I've got some steering fixes to do. Um, I've done the locker. I've got to change oil and do, you know, just general maintenance stuff. But everything's kind of coming together. Today I'm getting the sway bar pretty much installed. That's gone really well. Uh, I'll show you guys here in a second what I've done there. Uh, but I'm also doing some stuff on the front end of the truck. My steering radius, turning radius has never been what it should be. And I'll show you guys why and what I did to fix it. So we got a lot of stuff to cover. The truck's back on jack stands, but that's okay. Let's go get it, Merrick's Garage. Steering has always uh, been somewhat challenging on my Blazer. Um, I pulled everything off that was stock and when it was leaf sprung, I had high steer and crossover and ram. Now that it is uh, on lengths, I got rid of the crossover. Um, crossover is what, when you move the tie rod to the top of the steering arms instead of being down on the knuckle. There's too many moving pieces to run crossover. There's not too many pieces to run high steer. So I've still got high steer on it. But one of the big challenges I have is getting the steering shaft from the steering wheel down to the steering box because I got a bunch of stuff in the way. Let me show you what I mean. Ugh. You guys see that down there? There is my steering shaft. And uh, it has to get around a bunch of things <laughs> so it can get to my steering box. And all these joints and heims and universals, they tend to bind and uh, give resistance into the steering wheel. So that is part of what I've been dealing with is just excess resistance in the steering wheel. So I've gotten that finally dialed down. I backed off everything on the steering column, uh, steering shaft, and basically just let it find its happy place and then tightened everything back down. So that's part of the problem. Uh, the ram hitting the diff cover and limiting how much throw I get was part of the problem. So hopefully with what I've done here, we'll have it fixed. I'm optimistic. I'm making a right hand turn. I am at full lock only because I have this hitting right there. And it's hitting right there because this is as far outboard as I can put this because I put these in backwards. If I would have flipped these over, it would have inboarded, outboarded this by about an inch, which would have been all I needed to do. I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk a little bit about what hydraulic assist is for those of you who may not be familiar with it. With uh, oversized tires, oversized axles, oversized vehicles, the stock steering system is not really going to be up to the task of moving everything. This is the PSC hydraulic ram. It is operated off of this PSC box. This is a normal PSC box. It has two ports for the hydraulic lines. The hydraulic lines actuate this ram driving this shaft either outboard or inboard depending on the direction of travel. You have a dividing valve in here that will shunt fluid one way or the other, applying a significant amount of force to this drag link, sorry, tie rod, to this tie rod to help with the steering. With the ram mounted to a fixed position on the axle and a fixed position on the tie rod, the actuation of this ram will drive the tie rod either to the left or the right. 
it's really really simple it's really cool and it does add a tremendous amount of steering force to your system so much so that you do actually need to be careful that you're not putting strain on parts of the components that weren't intended for it going up top you can see this is uh, i still have high steer i don't have crossover but this is high steer this is my pan hard bar for those of you guys who haven't seen my videos on the links install. This is what keeps the axle located under the truck and stops it from swaying side to side. The tie, the drag link right here pushes on my steering arm over there, moving that guy. This guy is pulled along with it, pulling the other side. Now with the ram actuating on it and it's timed and synced with the box up here, you get a lot of force driving it over. I need to measure my throw and uh, get the center clamp mounted where I think it's going to go. With the ram fully extended, I have an eight inch, an eight inch throw. So when the wheel is centered and there is no steering input, the reservoir is going to need to be set at four inches. I'll then need to check to make sure that when it's cycling, the four inches either way, don't contribute to any interference with any other parts. With the ram set up for four inches of travel, I have four inches available for driving that way, and I have four inches available for driving that way. So with the wheel centered, like it is right now, this is where this should statically mount. Let's put it up, we'll throw the clamp in place, and see if I have any problems. Okay, things are lining up a lot better right now. So, with this bracket mounted right here, at full lock, full lock being determined by when my tie rod kisses the diff cover, I have plenty of room between the mount and my diff cover. But better yet, I have full extension of the ram. Okay, so that is the ram fully extended. My steering will not go further than this in the current configuration. So what I have to do is match this guy up so that I can get a bolt through here. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna back out this heim and drive it a little bit that way. This should so I have full passenger side lock I'm getting very close here on my steering stops which is nice I this is about factory let's see how it does going to the other side what I'm really hoping to see here is that I still have a tiny little bit left for the ram to collapse, meaning that I'm not taking to it to its full stroke length, and uh, that hopefully the tie rod is in a similar place, or my steering stops, steering stops, on the knuckle on the driver's side, on the passenger side, is getting pretty close. Let's go see. Uh, that looks to be pretty close to what I was dealing with. Yep. I've got a little bit left. So this works. This is good. This fits. This is where it's going to be. And I should have a lot more steering than I used to have. Even with a properly designed suspension setup, like I have in my truck, I, I have good uh, link separation angle. I've got good pinion angle. I've got good link lengths. Everything is, is how it should be, which is why the truck drives well. But with 14 inches of travel, you're gonna get body roll. And body roll can be, can be really kind of dangerous and a little unnerving, especially on the road and especially on off-camber stuff. Uh, the suspension tends to sway, and while you, you're not gonna roll the truck, most likely, it does tend to give a feeling of uh, unpredictability. 
having a sway bar in can dramatically limit the body roll you're going to get and provide a more secure and uh, predictable driving experience. Now, this is specifically focused because I've got a four link setup with a solid axle and leaf springs. The, the need for a sway bar is not as high because the the way the suspension works is different than the way it works with the link and therefore the sway bar does not control as much body roll as it does in this application. I actually pulled my sway bar off of my blazer when it was linked uh, years ago and uh, yeah it was a handful but it didn't body roll like it does now. Uh, I still have the sway bar on the Suburban although that will probably come off eventually. Uh, it's a personal decision though, so don't take my word for it. Um, I wanted the sway bar off so I could get more flex. You may want the sway bar on so you have more control on the road if that's where your truck spends most of its time. Sway bar tech. I know it doesn't sound that exciting, but a sway bar is actually one of the most important pieces in getting a quality ride out of your suspension. You can set your suspension up to be as awesome as you want, but if it's not controllable, it's most likely not going to work very well for you and it might end up being dangerous. So I have known that I've needed a sway bar on my truck for a long time. I actually have purchased one. I'd spec it out. I know where it's going to go. I just ran out of time before hammers to get it in my truck. I have another big trip coming up. So I had to get this thing installed. So today I'm gonna to go through how I installed it, why I chose the sway bar I did, how it works for me, and what you guys can look for when you're looking for a sway bar for your vehicle. Anyway, let's go get our sway on. Jumping straight in it, you can see right here, this is my sway bar. That is the sway bar right there. These are the link arms and their objective is to tie the axle together through this torsion bar, sway bar, axle shaft, metal rod, whatever you wanna call it, this guy right here. When building the frame, I was cognizant of my need for a sway bar. I wasn't exactly sure where I was gonna put it. As it happened, this cross member linkage right there between my frame rails has become the perfect location for my sway bar. I was actually able to get the sway bar drilled through and it now is sleeved and runs through, let me see if I can get this in here, this cross member right here. The sway bar itself is now going to articulate down onto the axle. I have to build my mounts for it, uh, but it's most likely gonna be connected down to what is that bump stop strike pad perch that is going to have a strike pad put on it for the bump stop and then the link arm will tie into it now i was very fortunate to get this thing to line up the way it did but it was not because of uh, happenstance there actually was some some planning on on my part when i did this um you can go and buy a off-the-shelf sway bar uh, but understand that how a sway bar fits is not as important as the properties and characteristics of that particular sway. The sway bar is gonna be best suited when it's designed around your vehicle weight, your suspension travel, your driving style, and your constraints for packaging. So I knew that an off-the-shelf standard, you know, curry anti-rock bar would probably work, um, but it may be undergunned for the weight of my truck and uh, various other things. So I went with a company called Speedway Engineering. Now, it's not going to be all pretty and powder coated. As you can see, it came in, in raw steel, which is just fine for me. But what they did offer is the opportunity to spec out my bar length, my bar diameter, my bar uh, construction, solid or, or uh, hollow, uh, my link bar, my link arm length, and a ton of other parameters. They do provide all the calculations based on what each sway bar will do, meaning how much force is required to move it X amount. And you can take that, correlate it with how much your truck weighs, figure out how much travel you've got, and come to an answer that is going to work best for you. Much like your axles in your truck, the sway bar has to be able to absorb torsional rotation. Think of uh, a truck tire going from zero traction to full traction. 
that sudden shock load, instead of being transferred through to your U-joints and your ring pinion and all that stuff, is often absorbed through rotational twisting of the axle shaft. Now that is due to some very, very um, clever mechanical and uh, materials engineering that has taken all the attributes of iron and steel and refined it down to a product that works for this application. So think of a sway bar like you would think of an axle shaft. They're gonna be very, very similar in materials and construction and strength. What an axle shaft does is what a sway bar does. It's going to counteract the rotational force that's being applied through it when the truck body rolls, for example, but also, most importantly, return back to its, uh, its original shape as soon as that load is lifted. So that's why you are spending money for a sway bar, because you're spending money for that shaft. The rest of it is just regular steel, but the technology is in the sway bar shaft itself. So I have a one inch sway bar here. Look at the number of splines on this thing that are engaging with the splines in this arm. That's it. Both sides are gonna be linked to the axle. Right here, it's gonna have a link down to the axle, and right here, it's gonna have a link down to the axle. Now, as the axle articulates and one arm moves up and one arm moves down, that torque is gonna to be transferred to this axle shaft and allow it to twist and wind up. These bushings are what locates it in the frame, and that's all there really is to it. There is not a ton of tech involved in sway bars. The tech is involved in determining which one you want. Now, we can do a separate video on specking out a uh, sway bar if it's, if it's needed. Most people are just gonna go for a standard off-the-shelf sway bar, and that's gonna work fine for them. Uh, it was a little bit cheaper for me to go with this guy instead of buying like an anti-rock or something like that, but it did require me calculating the weight of my truck, calculating my travel, figuring out how long my link arm was gonna be able to be, and putting that all into the package that you see over here. So let's go take a look at how I mounted it, the truck, and then we'll put it back in and you guys can see how it works. I wanted this guy to house the sway bar. And amazingly so, I have been able to drill a hole all the way through that will work for the sway bar mount. What led to the challenge of drilling through the frame was uh, what I was drilling through. So this is what the frame rail was made out of. Uh, 120 wall. This is the square tube that I built the frame out of. And this guy is what I plated it with. So you can see that together, it is a decently substantial piece of material. And I had to drill through this on both sides. So um, yeah, it took some work and uh, patience, but it came out great. The bushing that you saw on the sway bar will mount inboard right here. I then have some other bushings that space out the arm so it clears this. And then I have another fixture that tightens it so I can secure it down in here. So. Uh, Let's throw this guy back in real quick and you can see what I'm talking about. So here you can see the driver's side where the sway bar is coming out. And at this point, I don't have any of the bushings or anything in there. But uh, I want to show you what I did because I'm pretty proud of how this comes together. So my idea is I need to provide tension when I pull this because I want the arm as close to this as I can. And I want it squeezing the sway bar so it does not come loose. So let's install, first throw the bushing on the floor so you have to crawl under your truck. Because nothing can be easy, right? Okay, let's get this guy in. So I got the bushing lined up, it is in and secured. And then this is just some PVC pipe that I cut and sleeved. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna maintain position right here, applying pressure to that bushing, keeping it in there. And then the arm is gonna go over this 
and tighten down against it. Let me show you how. What I'm trying to do here is I want this to get sucked inboard as much as I can. So I need to pull this outwards. And the way I am doing that is through use of a simple, simple tool that pretty much everyone will have. Here's a deep socket that I have that fits over there quite nicely. That goes around it. And now, Does anyone else really, really enjoy using a drill press? There's just something about it that's very, very satisfying. I could, I could do this all day. And here's the sway bar. All painted, prepped, put together, ready to go in. Now, you'll see that I have to get a little creative here with my bushings. This is the bushing that shipped with the bar. And uh, it's a perfect fit for the bar, obviously. And on the inner frame rail, I drilled a hole that this seats into. Now, to space it out so it clears the frame rail and gives enough room for this to move without hitting the frame also, I had to uh, outboard it. All I did was pick up some PVC pipe. I picked up a two inch connector, which is gonna fill the outside hole. And I picked up this um, inside connector that will put pressure onto this bushing. And then I have this guy, it's just a PVC breather valve. It's two inches OD and a one inch ID, so it fits perfectly. And yeah, that's all gonna get snugged up. I use my trick where I tighten on this side to suck it all in. Because the objective that I'm looking for is I want both sides to be pressed into the frame. I want this bushing and that bushing to be squeezed so that the bar has no lateral movement whatsoever. It's just all vertical movement. So um, yeah, this is it. Holes are drilled. I'm just waiting on mounting everything to the axle and then we can uh, get these guys all in place. I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing dries with a sway bar in. It's been, uh, it's been a handful without a sway bar. I got the sway bar all dialed here. This is where it's gonna be. I have it 15 inches. Let me see if I can get it to stay up here. I've tensioned it pretty good, so it's uh, it's pretty tight in here. But this is what I'm gonna be looking at swing-wise. It's probably gonna sit about here. I've got nine plus inches, about nine and a half inches of up travel. That is not including, um, well, the bump stop's probably gonna bounce in and stop it before that happens. Um, these are my bump stop strike pads down there. They're just a piece of uh, the link tubing that I cut, uh, you can see I spent like six hours getting them straight on the, on the drill press. So this guy is probably gonna sit about here, link down to the axle tube right there, and then this gives it all that movement, which is about nine inches or more. So this is gonna work. I'm freaking stoked on how this came out. I got good bite on the splines. And yeah, same clearance. This came together pretty good. Hey, if you liked what you just saw, make sure to uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, check out one of these videos. I have a ton of videos on YouTube. I put one up every week uh, detailing everything from uh, the engine swap to the axle install to camping trips and wheeling trips uh, to rolling my truck and basically being a jackass.
I think you guys will dig them. If you've made it this far through this video, I obviously haven't bored you too much. So click one of those.